it. That's it. Spring it out, baby. Spring it out, but don't lose it. Look at the dead man. Huh? Look at his face. Look at his face. Hang in there, Sue. Don't lose it. Do you know him? I can't see. I want to go. At the doorway. Sue, so who's at the doorway? Who's at the doorway? A bird. The man who was shot. Look at him. Look at his face. Is it the face? Is it the face in this picture? Huh? Is it the face? I can't remember. I'm trying. Yeah, all I'm right. trying. All right, all right. So, go back. Where are you? Here. A room? What kind of a room? Please hang in there. Get him out of here, will you? Two. I'll talk to you later, okay? Come on, sweetheart. Go get ready for bed. I'll come right in. I can't. I'm losing. Get him out of here now. You two, out. Oh, not me, too, Stanley. Her. Get her out of this house. I gotta go. No, no, no. You, no, no, no. You don't listen to her. You don't listen to her. Stanley, you. She. She has this nightmare. Whose nightmare, Stanley? Whose? Hers or yours? Dean, I'm telling you to keep out of this. I keep out of it when you drag it into the house. That's none of your business. Our whole marriage is going down the drain, and it's none of my business. Well, Ronnie is. So get that acid head out of my house. Well, no, no, you see, that's my fault. I put her on that trip to find out something. Something I've got to know. So send her on another trip. Get her She's out of my life. You don't! No! She's getting close. You go away. Get out of here. Now, go on. So? So? So let's go back. Let's go back, remember? The no beginning. More. I can't do any. Ronnie, darling, button your shirt. You say get ready for bed. No, we're gonna play a game instead, sweetheart. Like a stamp plate? Yes, if you're quiet and do exactly as Mommy tells you to. Where are we going? Playing game now? Everybody is. Who's that? 
Ronnie, say hello to Mr. Archer. He's an old friend. Hi, sir. Oh, hi, Ronnie. Uh, what will I do, buy him a drink? Me mom will play nine feet. Oh, oh, well, you can't very well hide in an open doorway, can you? Come on in. Ronnie, Mr. Archer has lots of other toys. I do? Why don't you go find them? Sure, Ronnie, go have fun. There's so much I want to tell you. Do you have company? No, 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 just me and Barbara Stanwyck. I think the kids got no class. I, I see you still haven't learned to keep house for yourself. Oh, I got a little woman that comes in on Thursdays. Well, I must get her name. Yeah, me too. Jean. What? I have a problem, Lou, and I... I needed to talk to someone. Well, what's it been? Six, seven years? You'd be surprised how few people you can turn to when you're in trouble. Some people never find anyone. Oh, I'm so scared. Yeah, I can tell that. I have great intuition and you have very cold hands. Husband, huh? Interested in a long, sad story? Do we have the time? All night. I mean, well, that is if you'll let us stay. You and Ronnie can have the bedroom. I like your toys. Can I play with you till my daddy gets here? Oh, fine, fine, fine. Now, uh, where will daddy sleep? Don't worry. He has no idea where we are. Sweetheart, we're going to hide here for a while, so you stay with Mr. Archer, and I'll go get your toothbrush and jammies out of the car, okay? Okay. The jammies, huh? What you sleep in? Yeah, yeah, I do. Come on, I'll show you the bedroom. Don't your mommy ever make clean the room? Uh, well, I tell you, uh, when I had a mommy, she did it, and uh, then I had a wife, and she did it. Then I didn't have a wife, and uh, so I had to do it, but I tried not to get too good at it so it wouldn't be a permanent thing, you know? What do you think of that? Let's go to the bathroom. It's amazing what a spellbinder I can be when I really try. Okay. All right, here we go. Go myself. Well, that ain't exactly a talent, you know. <laughs> In here, Jean. Thinking up apologies. Come on, I'll take you home. 
check with my office. I'll just be a second. That's your office? Cassidy's Cafe? Uh, no time, Cassidy. Hardly takes any time at all. <laughs> any messages? Yeah. <clears throat> 7.45, uh, Mrs. McElroy. Uh, the Mad Martian and the Peep and Tom are outside a window. What should she do? What'd you tell her? I told her to pull down the shade and uh, say a rosary. Sound advice. All right, there's a car parked in front of my house. There's a ten in it for anyone who can drop it at that address in the morning. They've come and gone. Who's gone? I'm a trained detective, Sarkom. I can't figure that out, huh? Who's Ronnie's bear? He can't sleep without it. <sighs> well, Gene, a man who stops off to pick up his child's favorite toy doesn't exactly sound like a homicidal maniac, does he? Take it easy. Sure. Sure, nice and easy. My son's with his uptight father and some freaked out girl. So what do I have to worry about? All right, what's the girl got to do with it? She's part of a puzzle he's working on. Do you want to see the rest of it? Yeah. He places that a couple of weeks ago. She answered it. $5,000 reward if you can supply information leading to the whereabouts of this man and this woman. Last seen early July 1959. Probably San Francisco. Destination Hawaii via English freighter Swansea Castle. Contact Stanley Broadhurst, etc., etc. So? That's his father, Major Leo Broadhurst. She's Eleanor Strong, the woman he ran off with. Stan was about 12 at the time, and he's been looking for him ever since. 15 years, that's a long time. Just long enough to become an obsession. I checked all the hotels and the trailer camps and stuff, and I finally got lucky at a gas station. The attendant remembers the girl and Ronnie. They were asleep. Stanley filled up and headed north. Where north, who knows? To Santa Teresa, to see his mother. I'm chasing around all night, and you have this little bit of trivia right up your sleeve. I'm sorry, Lou. I just wasn't thinking last night. Mrs. Snow, this is Jean. May I please speak to Mrs. Broadhurst? Well, is Stanley there? The Mountain House? Does he have Ronnie with him? No, just tell that I'm on my way, and if Stanley... What's that about? Mrs. Snow, the housekeeper, doing one of her numbers. She absolutely runs that place. But Ronnie's with him. The last place I'd figure him to run would be home to Mother. That's where he always goes whenever he needs money. Why take Ronnie with him? To soften up Beatrice. That's his mother. Beatrice Faulkner Broadhurst. She's kind of wild about Ronnie. Not so fond of Stan. Hmm. Stan doesn't have much going for him, does he? Charge on up the mountain. It's a private road with the gate. We'll have to get the key. Fritz the gardener, Mrs. Snow's son.
Mrs. Snow. This is Mr. Archer. Mr. Archer. How do you do, Mrs. Snow? They've been racing by all morning. You can smell the fire from here, but you can't see it. Some ashes drifting by. It isn't near the mountain house, is it? <laughs> my dear, it is the mountain house. Oh, dear God. Lou. Don't worry, my dear. If there was anybody up there, we would have heard about it. Well, where are they then? Have you seen them? Not since they went up there. The real worry is the wind. If it turns, the whole mountain will go. That's their real problem. Mrs. Snow, apparently you don't understand. There is another problem. My husband and son are missing. So is the girl. We don't know what's happened to her either. I want to talk to my mother-in-law. But she doesn't want to see you. Mrs. Snow, I want to speak to Mrs. Broadhurst. It will only distress her. Excuse me. Perhaps you would like to go in too, Mr. Archer? Thank you, Mrs. Snow. Don't mind if I do. Hang in there, Fritz. I told you to stay out of sight. My daughter-in-law tells me that you're some sort of a detective, Mr. Archer. Uh, yes, ma'am, the, the private sort. I do hope my son has done nothing to warrant investigation. Well, I'm sure he hasn't. I'm looking for him, Beatrice. I want my son. Oh, gee, I want my son, too. But I lost him a long time ago. Why did you refuse to see him? I didn't refuse to see him. I've never refused him anything. Oh. Mrs. Snow does take too much upon herself. But then she is indispensable to me. I couldn't manage without her. Mrs. Broadhurst, do you have any idea where he might have gone? He doesn't confide in me, Mr. Archer. He only comes to me for money. This time, quite a sizable amount. Yes, I guess you know why. Oh, yes. He wants to buy information that will lead him to find his father. A father who deserted a wife and a son for a tramp. That's the sort of man he's looking for. Gene. They'll be coming back here. I'm sure of it. Would you wait here with me? person on me, buddy. You a reporter or something? Lou Archer, private investigator. I'm working for Mrs. Broadhurst. Who are you looking for? Looking for Stanley Broadhurst. Soon Ronnie, age six, and a, a wild-looking girl, dark hair, 17, 18. They were in a silver Corvette. <laughs> yeah, I saw them. Where? When? Driving down the hill. Hours ago, when we were first coming up. A wild-looking girl and a little boy. Stanley wasn't with them? Nah, I know Stanley. It was just a kid and that girl. Yeah, yeah, that's her, all right. Any idea how this all started? Not yet. But you can tell Mrs. Broadhurst that Joe Kelsey of the Forest Service is on the job. It's a hard way to make a buck, Joe. You could make it easier. Hmm? All right, why not? Thanks. What are we digging for? Well, somebody dug this hole a little while ago and then filled it in. And maybe while they were doing that, they dropped this. I hate to see a good cigar go to waste. That's important. Danny, good? I think you better ask Stan. That's his brand. Maybe I will. Because somebody dropped this or threw it away right over there. That's probably where the fire started.
blood. Still damp. Well, that's why the hole. To bury this. I think there's something more. Did a job on him. What, what are you doing? What, you found something? In his hand. Blisters, water blisters. He did the digging himself. Why would a man dig his own grave? Forced to? He was digging for something else? Or someone else. Look, before we solve this whole thing, we better call the cops. Right, I, I got a phone in my truck. at the poor boy the way you did in the hole in the ground and Mr. Stanley's body there. You terrified the boy. That boy told me that he put the body in the hole. He'll say anything, confess to anything when he's frightened. Am I telling the truth, Sheriff? Yes, she is. We've had a long history with Fritz. He's a born confessor. According to Mrs. Broadhurst, Fritz never left the main house till he found you digging up Stanley's body. You see? She would hardly say that if Fritz had killed her son. He only followed you there because... He was worried about Mr. Stanley. Hello, Mother. I didn't do anything wrong, honest. We all realize that, son. Only it takes some of us a little longer. Jane. Jane. <laughs> it was awful. I had to make my little fuck at it. Let's get you out of here. Has he found Ronnie? No, the sheriff's got an all points out on him. They'll find him, Jane. But he's with that girl and she's already killed Stanley. Why would he get out my baby? We don't know who killed Stanley. All we know is that she's taken off with Ronnie. We'll get him back for you, man. <laughs> Come on. I think 
think your mother-in-law may need some help now. Oh, dear God, I didn't even think of Beatrice. Will you take me there? Archer, I'm not so fond of the thoughts that I'm having that I want to be alone with them. But I would rather be alone. I'm sorry about your son. It's a judgment on me. God seems to have chosen me for special punishment. My son dead. My grandson missing. My mountain house in flames. Why not this house as well? I think I'd welcome the flames, Mr. Archer. My husband's told everyone. Common knowledge. That's why he left me. I didn't even have enough warmth for my son. Ronnie will need you now. <sighs> Ronnie. If he isn't dead. Do you have any reason to think that he is? Mr. Alcher, there's a call for you. Take it to here. Thank you. Archer. Well, we found the car. Ran out of gas on the San Marcos Pass. Any sign of the boy? No sign of anybody. Struggle? Nope. Wasn't there any... Look, just meet me back in my office, will you? That doesn't answer my question. What are you, some kind of vampire? No, there was no sign of blood. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Mrs. Broadhurst is offering a $10,000 reward. What's Mrs. Broadhurst? Warner can't afford it. Uh, can I buy you a napkin, please? Yeah. yeah. You don't just work for it, do you? I mean, there's a lot more to it, isn't it? What do you mean? Well, the way she hung on to you. Or do all your clients do that? No. No, usually when they're hurt as bad as she is, I just step on them. You're getting edgy now. Don't get edgy. You should know a wife in any murder case is always a prime suspect. Oh, that taco too hot for you? And the boyfriend is always the second suspect. Oh, that's beautiful. It's just beautiful. I mean, how fast you worked it out. Gene and I got together last night for the first time in six years, and it was such a groove, we drove up here this morning and knocked off her husband. You don't always have to pull the trigger. Oh, that's good. So we uh, put out a contract, huh? But you figure out whether we went 50-50 or what? Getting edgy again. See, don't get edgy. I'm just a hiccup trying out the rustic approach on the smart operator from L.A., that's all. No, you're not a hiccup, Tremaine, but you're right about one thing. I'm not just working for Gene. I'm not even getting paid, and you know why? Because I'm the smart operator from L.A. who lost her kid in the first place, and I'm just dumb enough to want to get him back. I'm a lousy judge of character. Oh, great. Now I gotta pay his salary yet. following you for hours. Up, down, across, and around, you're driving me nuts. Are you always just screwed up? Kind of a permanent state of mind. What's your name and occupation? Willie Cogger. Hey, hey, don't come on like no cop, man. Don't hassle me. Okay. Depends on what you've got. The announcement on the radio. 10,000 for information. Call Gene Bald her. Yeah, I wrote that bulletin. Lay something new on me. I'm putting in for the reward. You don't put in for the reward, you earn it. I figured that. All right, start sweating. So? 
It fell out of the chick's pocket. What chick? The chick with the kid. 17, 18, and stone. I mean, flake out. What about the boy? Well, about so high, short black hair. They was out of gas, so I give him a ride. How far? As far as they wanted to go, to the marina. They went on a boat, and I split. What kind of boat? <laughs> a boat boat. Now, come on! It was called the Wild Woman. Anyone. 
and neither did Sue. But I'm going to kill anyone who tries to stop us. Why? Because she's my girl. And she's afraid someone's going to kill her and the kid. You want me to believe that, that somebody's out to kill him? You heard the kid, Matt. They're both witnesses. They saw the dude with the axe. That's the second time she's seen someone killed in the same place. The second time? Yeah. Yeah. First time when she was just a baby. Three years old. She wasn't even sure that it happened, that it wasn't all just a dream. Until she saw that house again and BAM! Take two! Man, she was on a bad life before, but this is an Einstein trick. You lost me. That's when you go all the way out, man. To where space loops back on you. And don't even think about that. Because I will blow you right over the side. Jerry, why take it out on the kid? <gasps> Who needs the kid? Look, I wanted to dump him at the marina, but she flipped. I mean, man, she won't let go of him. Maybe she's right. Yeah, maybe she's right, because that guy with the axe would come swinging at her and the kid any time. The guy with the black beard and the black hair? Yeah, well, a lot of guys look like this. Yeah, and a lot of guys kill for love, too. It's the second most popular sport in the country. I know what I'm doing. Do you? You know, you're bucking for 20 to life for kidnapping right now, and if you use that thing on me, for murder. Nobody's gonna get her. I've looked down a barrel before, and I've never liked it, but I'll tell you something. If you don't turn this thing around, I'm gonna take that thing and shove it right down. Oh. Hold it! Now, I told you to hold it. You stay put. She's on one of her trips again, and one of us has got to go down there. Now, if you do it, I'm gonna lock you in and sail this thing back to Santa Teresa. So you call it. Make up your mind. No, no. Let go. You're hurting me. All right, you go on. Go on. going to kill us. He's coming to kill us, Ronnie. He's going to kill us. He's got the axe. You're squeezing me. Don't touch me. Sue, let me have him. Don't get any closer. He's going to kill us, Ronnie. Let me have You're him. squeezing me. me Run, Ronnie, hide, hide. Run, Ronnie, hide. No, no. Sue. Come on, snap out of it, Sue. You're safe now. Come on, Sue. You're safe. You're safe. Stanley. I thought you were dead. He didn't kill you. No. No, I'm all right.
thanks, fellas. See you. Next time you want to go fishing, make sure you stop by for a license. Now, ah, Tremaine, don't climb all over me. Why would I want to do a thing like that, Mr. Archer? Mr. Archer, oh, great, that says it all. Not quite. If you had let me in on your little secret, I could have had 50 men in the net so tight a minnow couldn't get through. Yeah, and panicked a kid with a gun. Anybody who carries a gun, I treat as a man. Oh, come on. Well, what do you want me to say? That I had the kid in my hands and I blew it, I lost him? Yes, I did, I said it. So you said it, how come I don't feel any better? Because the only cure is to get the kid back. Well, I have a better chance of doing that if you remember we're both on the same side. Okay, I figured I was entitled to one more needle. Sometime I'll bleed for you. Did you bring the clothes I yeah, asked for? Yeah, my car. How's my client holding up? Of a woman whose husband was done with an axe, and whose kids at sea with a couple of freaks, she's holding up pretty badly. She at the ranch? Yeah, under a doctor's care. He knocked her out a couple of hours ago. Did you check the registration on the boat? Yeah, out of Sausalito. Owner Jack killed Patrick's son, Jerry, but he hasn't seen him for a couple of weeks. How about the girl? Do you know her? Never heard of her. He says a man with long hair and a beard killed his father. A scared kid could see anything. The girl backs him up. Some confirmation of freaked out head. Jerry says he didn't kill anybody, but he's got a beard, and he's got long hair, and he's got a gun. So did Daniel Boone. Remember, the killing took place with a sharp instrument. Yeah, I know, but maybe, just maybe, at the time, now that's all I've got is a lot of maybes. Maybe Jerry did it solo, maybe Sue helped him, maybe, maybe there was somebody else. Wait a minute, let me tell you something. The DA doesn't like babies, and to tell you the truth, I'm not crazy about them myself. Yeah, well, to tell you the truth, pal, that's the one thing I never run out of. Hmm. Hey. Free cook, free frozen. Nothing done by human hands or fit for human stomachs. Yeah, sure, the whole world went to hell when they brought out colored toilet paper. <laughs> you know what I can buy? That freaked out story about two murders in the same house. No, I have to buy it because of something she remembers after the killing. Big bird. No, a machine. A big machine. Working in the rain in the middle of the night. That's a kid's imagination. Well, it was enough to convince Stanley to go out and start digging. Digging for what? I don't know. Maybe Stanley did. What kind of machine? Well, you've been around that place a thousand times. What do they got? They got everything. They got mechanical feeder. They got a couple of trucks, a tractor, a bulldozer, a medium-sized cat. Oh. Bulldozer. Scoops out and covers up? That's right. And whatever it covered up, Stanley got blisters digging for it. Why would that diamond axe in the back of the head? To keep him from digging deeper. What would a freaked out 18 year old have in common with Stanley Broaders? Well, she saw Stanley's ad. That wouldn't have meant anything to her. Except that she recognized Leo and Eleanor Strom from another picture she had. What picture? Right here. I found it in Sue's purse on the boat. 1956. She wasn't even born yet. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But there is something or someone in that picture that reminded her of what happened here before when she was three. Something that haunted her and terrified her. She went to Stanley to find the pieces. Okay, let's run them down. It's Leo Broadhurst. All right. Easy to see how he got the girls. Like Beatrice, this was taken about 18 years ago. Yeah. Stanley when he was 10, that's Eleanor Strong, man. Man, I have good taste. That's me. I thought you'd never get around to that. You were celebrating something, and I don't remember what. Who's that? It's Marty. Hard to believe she's only 16, isn't it? I'll tell you something else that's hard to believe. She looks enough like Sue to be her mother. Oh. Wait a minute. Well, if she's Sue's mother, then Fritz is Sue's father. Hey, run that by me again. This is Marty Nickerson. This is the girl that Fritz raped and made pregnant. She has to be Sue's mother. Hey, Sheriff! Sheriff Tremaine. I know that it's my husband. That's enough. But we didn't find Eleanor Strong. Naturally not. See, I didn't kill her. 
I only killed Leo. And at last, he has risen from the grave to accuse me. And I think I'm grateful. I've been too guilty for too long. Mrs. Broadhurst, I must advise you of your rights. You don't need to advise me, Sheriff Tremaine. But what you do need is proof that I really killed him. is lodged close to her heart. We're stabilizing her, but if the bullet starts to move, we're going to have to take a chance and go in and get it. But if it doesn't move? Well, sooner or later, it will have to come out. Sorry. Somehow I always knew that she killed him. He gave her enough cause. They were quarreling that night. He slammed out of the house and went to the, the cabin. Later she went out. She must have seen him with Eleanor Strom. She says she didn't kill Eleanor Strom. And what happened to her? I wouldn't know. If we find her, we'll know exactly what happened that night. There's one thing for sure. After Leo was shot, she didn't hang around to bury him. She must have run like a scared rabbit. Somebody buried him deep. Yeah, it would take half the night to dig a hole like that. Hey, Fritz, uh, years ago when you were in forestry camp, you learned to run a bulldozer, didn't you? I liked that. It was fun. I was good at it. Yeah, when you said you put the man in the hole, you meant the major, didn't you? Is that what I meant, Mother? You leave the boy alone. He'll say anything you want him to, and do anything I want him to do. Even bury a murdered man? If it was to protect Mrs. Broadhurst, yes. We both would. But she never asked for our help. All right, Archer, that's enough. This isn't the time or the place. Boy, we're up to our ears in dead bodies, and you want to pick the time and the place? I'm the sheriff. I pick what I want to pick. Oh, what are you, a part-time cop? Investigation by appointment only? You better knock it off. Oh, boy, everybody around here is protecting everybody else. What about you? You got some skeletons rattling around in your closet? You're gonna be rattling around in my jail if you don't keep your big mouth shut. You want it shut? Get me some answers. I got it. Mrs. Broadhurst confessed, remember? Not to killing her son, she didn't. I'm happy to solve one murder at a time. They're all tied together. You're not gonna solve anything until you find a guy with long hair and a beard. I used to wear a beard sometime. I hid it under my mattress. Hush, hush, son. Hold me a moment. Hush, hush. Satisfied, Archer? Lend me a pencil. I think I'm gonna get another confession. All this... Talk about murders and poor Mrs. Broadhurst dying. How much do you think he can take? Now locally, the smallest victim in the chain of tragedies that has struck the Broadhurst family is the grandchild, six-year-old Ronnie Broadhurst, who still is missing. Police roadblocks have been set up. All officers have been alerted to watch for the child and a young man and a young woman. I know the realities aren't so good, but they're a lot better than what your imagination is coming up with. Uh, the sheriff just called. He wants you to meet him at the pathology lab. He says it's urgent. The bullet Mrs. Broadhurst fired was a 22 caliber long rifle. And it struck the victim right there, ricocheted, and lodged there in the shoulder bone. No way it could have killed him. Then what did? This. Found it stuck between the ribs right there. You mean somebody stabbed him after he was shot? Before, after, during, that's for you detectives. I'm only a pathologist. All I can tell you is the bullet didn't kill him, the knife did. I'm looking for answers while I come up with a more questions. Now it's who stuck a knife on Leo Broadhurst. When we know that, we'll know who took 40 whacks at his son. Yeah, but if I can't find Eleanor Strom, who gives me the answers? Sue. What? In those days, three-year-olds toddle along with their mothers. 
Thanks a lot. That's Marty Nickerson. How is she going to help me? She probably changed her name, moved away somewhere. How am I supposed to find her? Be a detective. Marty Crandall, can I talk to you, please? Is it about Sue? Yes, it is. Come on in. Have you heard something? Do you know where she is? No, I'm sorry I don't, but I thought Shh, if I could... Shh, my husband's sleeping. Let's go in the other room. He hasn't, uh, he hasn't slept since this whole thing started. Yeah, we've been frantic. Uh, I finally had to give him a couple of sleeping pills. Well, has she tried to contact you? Have you seen her? No. Not once. Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. Archer. I saw you on television. You're the man on the boat. The detective. Oh, wow. Yeah. M my Sue wouldn't hurt that little boy. I just know she won't. Mrs. Crandall, your Sue is tripped out on acid or something. There's no telling what she might do. <laughs> That's impossible. Unless, of course, uh, that boy talked her into it. He could, you know. She's, uh, impressionable. <laughs> Very impressionable. Yes, she is. She's, uh, she's really a lot of things. Yeah. Like, for instance, the daughter of Marty Nickerson and Fritz Snow. Is that what you wanted? I'm sorry, I don't know what I wanted. You know, my husband knows about that one incident in my life. And he must be one of the good guys. There are some left, you know. At least there were. Don't make them like they used to. <gasps> he brought Sue up like she was his own. <sighs> We've given her everything. She has her own room, and her own phone. Car, clothes, credit cards, everything, everything a girl could want. Yes, and maybe all she really needed was enough love to make the bad dreams go away. I resent that. We've been good parents. <laughs> and I tried, I tried very hard to make up for that night when Fritz... Well, that was statutory rape. Underage, but with consent. He didn't force you. Why do you have to go into that now? Why do you want to rake up the past? Huh? Well, the past is what puts Sue where she is right now. The memory of what happened that night is a mountain now. She's a sick girl. Oh. I... I, I always thought it was just a... a wild dream until they found Leo's body. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, it's horrible. Mrs. Crandall. Mrs. Crandall. Mm. Somebody took Sue to the mountain house that night. The same woman who was making love to Leo when he was killed. You think I was that woman? Yes. But I never saw the mountain house. And I despised Leo Broadhurst. But she, she was my friend, my, uh, my teacher. You mean Eleanor Strom? I didn't know she was having an affair with Leo. I respected her. After Susan was born, I often left her with Eleanor. She adored the baby. So you're saying that Sue was with Eleanor Strom the night Leo was killed? 
she was having the affair. It makes sense. You expecting anybody? No. Would Jerry bring her here? Well, why not? This is her home. This is where she'd be safe. Where she's lost, in spite of what you think. Hey, I... I really love her. You've got to believe that. It's important. When you believe it, it's important. Stay here. She's resting comfortably. Oh, thank God. Honest, Mr. Ochoa, I wasn't scared. Hey, you're a pretty tough guy, huh? You got some sleep. How's it feel to be a hero? Well, I suppose you were planning to give me a parade, huh? No, but I was planning on bringing the following charges against you. Withholding evidence, jeopardizing the life of a kidnapped victim, and obstructing justice. The only thing you can't get me on is impersonating an officer. Don't smart mouth me, Archie. I chase my tail looking for Marty Nickerson. You walk around with the only lead in your pocket. I know, but we got the boy back. You promise me you're going to start playing the Lone Ranger. I'll put a tail on you so tight. The only time you'll have any privacy is when you're taking a shower. And I won't even guarantee that. All right, all right. Now can I get some sleep, huh? Wait a minute. You carry a gun? Well, I got one. Why? Because we're dealing with a maniac. That's why. We found another body. Same M.O. Pickaxe in the back. Anybody we know? The drifter that led you to the girl. Willie Coggins. That's him. Hello? Hello. That you, Cassidy? Yeah, yeah. Wh where you been? Oh, I've uh, been busy. What do you got? Uh, uh, a woman called Long Distance. Uh, she wants you to call her right back. Yeah, it's a no name. Uh, phone number is... Um... Santa Teresa, 555-6225. Got it. Hello. This is Lou Archer. Can we meet somewhere in private? Well, that depends on who I'm talking to. This is Eleanor Strum. When and where? The pier. Ten o'clock tonight. Mr. Archer. Oh, 
Why'd you come back? I had no choice. When I read that Stanley had been murdered and Leo so many years ago, I had to come back. Especially since the newspapers are trying to make me a part of all of it. You're the key to it all. In my way, yes. But not in yours. I was in Mexico, in my shop in Manzanilla, when Stanley was murdered, and I can prove it. I haven't accused you of anything. Only by implication. Where is Eleanor Strome? Have you seen this woman? Three murders committed. Sex crime of the century. It's all gotten blown out of proportion. You'll put a stop to that by coming back. But you may stir up a bigger storm first. Like a murder trial. I know. That's why I had to come back. That's why I have to talk to you before I talk to the police or anyone. I came back to face it, but I have to know what I'm going to face. I must know what you know. I'll pay you, Mr. Archer, for your help. No, no money. We just trade information. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. Who do you think was with Leo the night that Beatrice shot him? Well, if little Sue was there, it must have been her mother, Marty Nickerson. She says she never was there. She says she despised Leo Broadhurst. Despised? No woman ever despised Leo Broadhurst. Especially not her. Now, how do you... I was her teacher, Mr. Archer. I was her closest friend, and she confided in me. As a matter of fact, that's how I first became interested in Leo. How she loved him. How she protected him. Protected him? By claiming that Fritz was the father of Sue. Hold it and back up a second. Everybody around here makes Fritz the heavy. And all of a sudden, you're putting the black hat on the man of all seasons, Major Leo Broadhurst. I would have died with that secret. But Marty has chosen to involve me in this mess. Fritz was tried and convicted of rape. One witness for the prosecution, Marty Nickerson. None for the defense. Yeah, yeah that'll do it every time. He bought her off. The one thing Leo could not afford was to be the father of Sue. He had too much at stake. And what did it cost poor old Fritz? Just three years of his life. Knowing all that, you were still willing to run away with him. I was young and in love and hurt. It doesn't help knowing that he couldn't resist one last goodbye with Marty. And she could never resist anything. In all those years, she was telling Sue that what happened was just a nightmare. When is the nightmare going to end, Mr. Archer? floral pieces. Tomorrow I'm going to put them all in Mr. Stanley's grave. He'll like them. Yes, he will. Fritz, you remember yesterday you told me you once had a beard? I had to buy it. You had to buy it? 
I can't grow a real beard. I tried. The girls like beards and long hair. Yeah, yeah. When's the last time you wore it? I only got it so the girls would like me. Did you wear it when you put Mr. Stanley in the ground? It wasn't Mr. Stanley. It was his father. I put his father in the ground and I covered him up. That was a long time ago. Fritz, listen to me and try to remember now. First, you put on the beard. Then you put Mr. Stanley in the ground. Then you covered no! him up. No, it wasn't Mr. Stanley. It was his father. Don't you think I can remember anything? She took the beard away from me. She wouldn't let me have it. Your mother? Your mother took the beard away from you? She said that I didn't need any other girl. She said she'd be my only girl. She wouldn't let me have it. Why do you keep it in? Why do you keep it in? Why do you keep it in? What are you doing to the boy? Forcing him to confess to a crime he never committed. I don't need a confession. All I needed to know was why someone hated Leo Broadhurst enough to stick a knife in him after he was shot. I found the answer tonight. The boy is not responsible. You ask the sheriff. You ask Mrs. Broadhurst. No, I'm asking you. About that night in the storm when Mrs. Broadhurst followed her husband to the mountain house and you, you followed her and you saw what she did. Yes. First I saw that slut who had accused my boy running out of there so frightened, so drunk. She forgot the child, the child she had damned him with. And then I saw him lying there in his own corruption, but still alive, like some evil, undying thing. And such things must be destroyed. And Stanley? Digging him up. That could not be allowed. If you want your father, go to him. Stay with him. Lie with him. That's not why you killed him. I couldn't let him dig his father up. Everybody had to believe that he was alive. And with Eleanor Strom. I found Eleanor Strom. I talked to her tonight. She gave me your motive. She was another cheap. Yeah, well, whatever she was, she was not with Leo that night. Marty was. The same Marty who accused your boy of rape. I would have killed her, too, but she got away. How did you get Fritz to bury the body? Convince him that Mrs. Broadhurst wanted him to do it? I did everything for her. I was her only friend. She needed me. Some friend. You let her live with that guilt for 15 years. Leo Broadhurst had to die because of what he did to his wife and to Fritz. And anyone who tried to bring him back had to die. First Stanley... And now you, Fritz!
Nah, there's got to be a better way to beat the rising cost of living. Well, maybe if Leo had been a little more discreet about where he took his women, maybe a fellow in a strong would come back to find out what happened to him. Maybe Marty... Yeah, Nick I know, maybe, down. maybe. Listen, when you cut out the maybes, why don't you give me a call? I could always use a good man.